What's up everybody, my name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Okay, so the movie. Girl on the Third Floor was an interesting movie and it had some things to say. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any theories of your own or if you just picked up on anything that I missed. I shouldn't have to say this, but this is an explained video, so there's gonna be spoilers, but you should already know that by now if you're watching an explained video. There are a couple of themes throughout this movie. One violation, whether it be violation of other people, violating a person's space, their house, the theme of just violation. For example, what happened to the girl? What happened to Sarah? Don defrauding people on their retirement funds, cheating on his wife Liz when she was pregnant. He's constantly putting his friend Milo and others in tough positions. There's different forms of violation. It's just a constant theme that's just sprinkled in throughout the entire movie. Throughout this film, the filmmakers want you to feel uncomfortable. There's fluids and nasty goo and oozing out of every orifice of the house. It's pretty damn unsettling. Also, in almost every conversation in the movie, they go with this close-up shot, but not at like a slight angle. It's basically a straight dead shot. It's pretty uncomfortable, and it's, it's meant to be that way. It's meant to make you feel as if someone is violating your personal space. And it worked. Everybody has been in those conversations where Someone's talking to you and they're just way too close to your face. Like they're just totally invading your personal space. Like you just need a boundary where someone just cannot cross and they're just right up in there. Like, just, just step back, just step back just a little bit. Theme one. Two, theme two. The second theme is the theme of cause and effect. That the choices that you make, what you choose to do or not do, your choices have an impact on not only yourself, but others around you, especially people close to you. It's about accountability holding others accountable and taking accountability for your own actions. Actions have consequences. Everyone at this point has turned a blind eye to Don's actions before. He defrauded people out of their retirement funds, then he gets off easy for his prison sentence. He cheated on his wife Liz while she was pregnant and she turned a blind eye. And Milo turned a blind eye. And everybody turned a blind eye. No one held Don accountable for his actions. So Don and Liz are moving into this house and it's a fixer upper. As Don put it, this house is their second chance. That line is not only to be taken figuratively, but literally as well. For each character, this is literally their second chance to do the right thing. This is their test. When Sarah makes her advances to Don, that was a test. Don had a choice. And did Donnie Boy learn his lesson? Hell no. The dude didn't even hesitate. Even the dog is like, yo, jackass. Don't make the mistake again. Don't you make the... Because the, the dog then barks and then DMX barks. You got it, you got it. He's trying to right his wrongs and then he chooses to cheat on Liz. Again. This time with a ghost. Bruh. Seriously? God damn. All right, never mind. Forget what I said about the ghost thing. Well, she's the lady of the night. No, don't get too excited. Getting back on track. It wasn't just the act, it was how he treated Sarah afterwards. After he got what he wanted, he was done with her. Just threw her away, just like the guy did before. He threatened her and he just didn't take how she felt into consideration. And that's, his, that's a common thing he does. He just does not take anyone else's feelings into consideration when he does the things that he does. Don never sought out help from Ellie, even though she said to come to him for help. Speaking of Ellie, who else caught on that she was a ghost? I'm pretty sure that she was. A couple days later, Don's friend Milo comes over to help with the house, and Milo says something to Don about Sarah. Don and Milo get into a little argument. Don says, if you can't handle it, don't be here when I come back. Bitch, I'm helping you for free. He is helping you for free. Shut your mouth. Good, Don's a dick. Anyway, that was a test. Milo had a choice. Milo stayed. I would have left. Milo stayed and turned a blind eye again to what Don does. Milo encounters Sarah and this is Milo's chance to do the right thing. And he tells Sarah, I'm sorry Don's an asshole. Good start Milo. Good start. Very good start. Please stay on this track. You got it right man. Just keep it going. But then he says, you need to get out of here. God damn it Milo. You blew it. You blew it. You had it and you blew it. Milo doesn't do the right thing. He doesn't hold Don accountable. He turns a blind eye again. So Sarah goes, all right, okay. You want a blind eye? I'll give you a blind eye. Whack. <laughs> Sarah literally gives him a blind eye. Then Cooper the dog. Ah, poor Cooper. This dog unfortunately becomes a victim of circumstance. Now, Don could have prevented this just by doing the right things, but cause and effect. For every action, there's a reaction. Actions have consequences, good or bad. So when Don goes to the police about what happened to Cooper, that was an interesting scene. Don is telling the cop about the incident with Cooper and how Sarah won't stop messing with him. The cop is taking notes and he says that he'll put the name in the description in the report. But there are no signs of struggle, no evidence of forced entry, and he points out that the whole time Don was sleeping upstairs and didn't hear a thing. Donnie boy gets irate because he feels like the cop isn't doing anything about it. 
Oh, poor baby. <laughs> it's an interesting choice of words. Go watch that scene and listen to that dialogue again. I think what Travis Stevens was trying to do was, I don't want to speculate, but out of hell with it. This is what we're doing here anyway. So this conversation could be very comparable of how victims of assault have gone to anyone of authority to report it. And they feel like that the authority figure is dismissive and isn't doing anything about it. And I don't just mean cops. I'm talking principals and managers and bosses and whoever's in charge. So Don does bad things to people and isn't held accountable. Someone does something bad to Don and he wants them to be held accountable. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. It's like little Donnie boy is getting a taste of his own medicine. Eventually, Don apologizes to Sarah for everything that he's done to her. This was another chance for Don to right his wrongs and learn from his mistakes. But it was all a scheme. I used to read Word Up magazine. It was all so we could catch Sarah off guard and take her out just to shut her up. Don says all the right things that Sarah wanted to hear, which means that he knew what he was doing hurt her. And he knew how it hurt her. He just didn't care. Don the Con strikes again. Who will never learn, will he? I think Travis Stevens was trying to make it so this scene is comparable to when perpetrators are apologizing in court to the people that they've hurt. Only when they're faced with consequences is when they start feeling sorry and they say all the right things. But it's usually just so they won't get in trouble. Even Sarah asked, did you rehearse that? And she even compared the gift from Don to a bribe. A couple days later, Don finally meets his fate and gets taken out. But note what he was saying when that happened. Why are you doing this to me? What? After all the bad things he's done, he still didn't think what was happening to him was justified or warranted. He thinks of himself as a victim, but never anyone else. Fast forward to Liz finally arriving at the house. One of her first tests was when she sees what happens to Sarah. Liz yells stop. Liz did something. Liz did the right thing in that situation and Sarah took notice. Sarah then tells Liz what happened to her and the girl at the house when it was a brothel. But Liz's real test came when Sarah poses Don, promising that he can change and that it'll be different. Anyone else notice he didn't apologize about that whole thing? It's like even in death, he didn't apologize. He just asked her to understand. As far as she's concerned, this is Don. She doesn't know that it's Sarah posing as Don, it's Don. Asking her to understand and say that it's okay. Just say you understand that it's okay. Hell no, to the no, 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 hell to the no. Nope. Liz finally learns from her mistakes and says, no, it's not okay. Sarah actually says, I'm proud of you, Liz. I thought you weren't gonna make it there at the end. That line might get lost with all the craziness that is happening in that scene. That scene is just wild. Liz then goes to Ellie and does the right thing and finds Sarah's body and gives her a proper burial. Fast forward six months later, and we see that Liz and the baby are still in the house looking safe and sound. Or are they? What are you doing? There's more spirits. There's more skeletons in the closet, if you know what I mean. What are you, what are you doing? It's not over yet. Because Sarah and every other spirit may not be there, but we see that Don is still there. My takeaway is this, that it could mean you can't run away from your demons. You have to learn to live with them. Or that you can't run away from your past. You have to learn to live with it. Or that she ends up staying in parallel with her relationship. She stays in the relationship. She stays in the house. And unfortunately, again, like a relationship, she's stuck with Don. If anyone out there has any other theories on that last scene, let me know in the comments below because I'm not 100% certain on that. If you liked my take on Girl on the Third Floor and you want to see my movie reviews, recommendations, rankings, etc., etc., make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena. Take it away.